here today to talk to you about product marketing Uberis. My name is Hugo Macedo and um, I was, let's say, born in the 70s. You know, I grew up in the 80s, college in the 90s, became a professional in the 20s. So accumulated professional experience of 20 years. I'm married, have two kids, uh, one with 12, another 13, and a dog, Ziggy. Um, and I live in Lisbon. Um, I studied engineer, but most of my career was in marketing. Um, I guess it's because I'm curious about humans and technology. Um, I've worked in several different business, um, different roles, you know, a VP of marketing, CEO, even failed founder. Uh, but today I'm senior director of product marketing at PandaDoc, a unicorn tech company uh, going after your paperwork. That's another story. So today it's uh, about product marketing Uberis and I want to make a disclaimer. The opinions expressed are my own, of course, and do not reflect the views of anyone I'm related to. Also important is, although I reference content and data from the Product Marketing Alliance, my opinions are about product marketing they do not reflect any opinion regarding PMA, which is doing a great job. So I just want to set that clear before we start. So, and let's start with the story. The story of Icarus. Icarus was the son of Daedalus, a famous craftsman. Oh, back in the days, this was from Greek mythology. And his father, you know, Daedalus, was the creator of the, of the labyrinth, a huge maze located under the court of King uh, Minos of Crete, of Crete, where the Minotaur, a half-man, half-bull, kind of monster, uh, lived. In order to keep the secret of the labyrinth and all the potential of Daedalus craftsmanship, Minos, uh, Minos, King Minos, wanted to imprison Daedalus, or imprison Daedalus, and Icarus in a tower above his palace. They were sentenced for life in prison in that tower. Not great prospects for um, two marvelous people, but they have a plan. Only if they could flew out of the tower into freedom. So Daedalus, you know, the smart craftsman, managed to create two sets of wings made of uh, feathers glued with wax. He taught but, you know, he taught Icarus that this was their plan, a uh, way out of the tower of the imprisonment, but he had to be careful not to fly too low near the sea or it, the feathers would get wet and destroyed or too high um, and too close to the sun and the wax would melt and dissolve and destroy the wings. But something went wrong. Together they flew, first together they flew out of the towers in towards freedom. Icarus was so excited being able to fly. He flew high, higher and higher until forgetting about his father's warnings. The feathers started to melt and he finally felt into the sea and drowned. Not a happy ending. Icarus is the story that tells about youthful Ubris. This excessive self-confidence and ambition to drive the careless Icarus to a fatal end. And you wonder, what's the relationship with between Icarus and product marketing? Well, I started to think that product marketing has some relation with Icarus. If you look at product marketing framework that really you know sets the tone and, and sets the scope of product marketing, it's kind of overwhelming. You know, we take care and we work on on everything from go to market, pricing, sales collateral, analysis, business case, segmentation, storytelling, retention and expansion acquisition, everything. 
I wonder if there's some Uri's here, some oversell confidence that we can do all of this. We also see ourselves in the middle of everything, the middle in the middle between product, customer success, sales, marketing. We are at the center. Mm. Uri's, are we at the center? Do we have all the scope? And we even want to have a seat at the table. You know, this is the fame, uh, talk in the PMA regarding, you know, three reasons why product marketing deserves a seat at the strategy table. So we know not only you want to influence and work on a lot of things, we consider ourselves in the center and we want to have a seat at the table of the strategy discussions and decisions. All makes a little fan sense, but sounds a bit like Uri's. And, you know, things are not going great. If you look at the data of the state of product marketing report from 2020, and also, you know, the same 2021 with the same kind of trends, most people, you know, uh, we product marketing don't, don't see that others understand our role. Um, you know, only 5% actually do, and 50% kind of, some don't, some don't do, and only 24% really understand what we do. So, not a great picture. People don't understand what we do. And if you look again at the scope of the framework, to do all of this, we must have an army working with us. Do you have? Hmm, most people don't. We are small teams. Most teams are under three people, three or less, or five or less. So it's very small teams with huge scope. And you wonder, maybe maybe we have big budgets, you know, to hire contractors, agencies, consultants, and do all that stuff. But we don't. We have a very small budget. So less than 250K uh, a year. So we don't have a team, a big team. We don't have big budgets, but we have a huge scope. Mm. Well, and if we ask them how much, you know, after, ask product marketing from the product marketing um, report, how much do we you influence strategy? They're actually not very convinced. 6.3 in 10, not a great grade. We don't influence much. And when looking at the product, how much we influence product, also not great, even less than strategy, which is kind of weird. We influence less product than we influence strategy, but 5.9 and going down every year is not a good picture. And if we ask them, how do you measure success? How do you track your OKRs? They give you 13 different ways of measuring success, like from generate new revenue, cross sell, sales confidence, whatever that means, um, upsell customers, you know, everything in, in between. Which is strange because, you know, if you ask sales, marketing, customer success, how they measure success, they probably give you two, three, probably four metrics, key metrics, you know, pipeline created, uh, new revenue, win rates, CSMs will look at churn, NPS, expansion, marketing will look at leads, opportunities in pipeline, and revenue generated, you know, three or four metrics will define these functions. Well, to define PMM, we have to look, have to look at 13 different metrics. So we can't really agree uh, how success looks like, which is also not good. And of course, I think the results that we don't actually feel valued. So people don't understand what we do. We have a hard time to influence. Uh, we can even show how to measure success. So uh, in the end, we actually don't feel valued. So let's recap. We have a massive scope. We don't have the resources in a wonder that in the end we don't influence much. 
and people don't really know what we do, and it doesn't help that we can't agree on what success looks like, and we therefore feel undervalued. Not a great story. I guess we have a problem. We have a problem and it starts interesting enough, ironic enough. I think we have a naming and positioning problem. Is that like the old, you know, the shoemaker's son always goes barefoot. We should be the experts in naming and positioning, but we are not doing a good job for ourselves in terms of defining product marketing. Let's look at naming, product marketing. Do we mean product to marketing? Or is it product and marketing? Or maybe marketing about the product? Because there's probably other kinds of marketing. No one really knows, no one really understands. Doesn't help. And if you look at the definition that's in, in, in the PMA side of what is product marketing, no, they should you know, they are a reference in the industry. And so it's there, like product marketing is the driving force behind getting products to market and keeping them there. Product marketers are the overarching voice of the customer, masterminds of messaging, enablers of sales and the accelerators of adoption, all at the same time. Mm. Let's... I guess we have a positioning problem. Let's recap. Like, voice of the customer, messaging, sales enablement, and product adoption. Not only that they're very different things, but all at the same time, aren't we the ones that are always saying to product and marketing people, we need to have a differentiation, a single source of excellence. How do we differentiate ourselves? The one thing we excel. Like we need positioning, we need to uh, re be very clear and we can't be all things to everyone. That's what we say to others. Shouldn't we say this to ourselves also? Aren't we trying to be all things to everyone? I think we have a challenge here. So we don't need to go over this again, right? Uh, this is not working. So. Can we just agree there's, if there's one thing I would like to get from uh, this talk is that we agree that we have a problem and we need to work on it because we don't want to be the Icarus. Fly higher and higher, our ambitions go higher and higher and in the end, things don't go well. So let's just agree we have a problem. Now I'm going to tell you, you know, a way forward. It's not a solution. There's no one silver bullet. Uh, but I'd like to suggest a way forward that could improve things. So what now? So I always like to revert to this uh, famous quote from All Rice and Jack Trout from the, the book Positioning, uh, you know, famous in the reference. They said, don't try harder, try different. So how can we try different? I would suggest we divide and conquer. This is just too big. Product marketing scope is just too big. We need to divide this. So let's start by dividing by two. And I suggest we divide PMM into MTP and GTM. Oh, not very clear, I know. Uh, but let's talk about each one at a time. So MTP, I mean market to product. Uh, I'm still not convinced about the name. Maybe it's strategic product marketing. No, we'll, we'll, we'll probably need to uh, go back to this later. But um, this area is about re reports to product and aligns with product goals. This area influences product strategy and brings the customer market intelligence to the, both the product organization into the, or, uh, the whole company. They are the masters of customer and market understanding. And they focus on also on positioning and messaging. Oh, we know well. And they have mid long term focus, not short term. Because, you know, how do you influence the, the product strategy, product roadmap? It's, uh, it's not something we do, you know, this quarter, 
even next quarter is probably something you're influencing for next year roadmap. Go to market, you know, it's probably, you know, most of this, you know, reports to marketing, it's does launch orchestration, drives GTM strategy and plans, support channels, um, and align with marketing goals. So mostly generate pipeline and revenue. And they are more short term focus. They need to commit and help the revenue organizations to achieve their quarterly goals. So you see, there are two different realities. MTP is about reporting to reports to product, GTM reports to marketing. One influences product strategy, the other influences marketing strategy. One is customer marketing intelligence, the other is channel intelligence. Know the channels, what works. One is about positioning and messaging, another one is marketing and sales assets. One is about product goals, one is lined with marketing goals. One is mid long term focus, another one is short term focus. One is has a strategic mindset, another one has a delivery and results mindset. They're just two different jobs, two different mindsets. They're different skills. They require different people. So that's what I suggest. You know, the whole story goes, no one really understands what we do and how or what we impact. We try to do too many things and influence too many metrics. We have a positioning problem. First, we need to accept that we have this problem so we can try different solutions. One is that I'm suggesting here is to divide product marketing into two. One aligned with product, another aligned with marketing. And, you know, like we saw, they have different scopes, mindsets, metrics, and require two different kinds of people. I don't know about you, we're trying this at PandaDoc and it's going great. Of course, we have a long uh, way forward, but I really believe this is, uh, can be a solution to the problem we discussed. Maybe you want to try it. Maybe we can compare notes. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to hear about how you're driving product marketing effectiveness across your organization. And don't be Icarus. Be ambitious, but uh, make sure you drive the right impact. Music